I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Thank you very much. You can sit down. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I read some verses at the end. I read some verses in the, at the beginning. And I will read a verse in the middle. We're looking at one, the first part. Second, the middle part. And third, we're looking at the final part. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 11. We're looking at verse 3. And he said unto him, at thou he that should come or do we look for another a great question a mighty question John the Baptist was going through some challenges and he wanted to know somebody was to come and he said are you the one to come or should we look for another I'll come back to that I'm looking at verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. We move out of that question. And then we come to a mighty statement of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ is saying, you heard John the Baptist are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? He answered that question. After he answered the question, then he announced to the people, the people who want to have connection with the one that was to come, the, the people who want to have a great mighty anointing coming from the one that is to come. He said, the kingdom of God is here. Because the king of the kingdom is here. The power of the kingdom is here. The honor of the kingdom is here. The glory of the kingdom is here. And so the question that John asked are you the one? The one that will bring the kingdom. Are you the one? The one that will bring the power. Are you the one? The one that will usher in the glory. He said, of course I am. How can we connect? How can we have the salvation? How can we have the glory? How can we have the power? How can we have all the provision of the kingdom? Ah, he said, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. The people that will defy every hindrance. The people that will not mind whether it is rainy or shiny. The people that will not mind what their mind or their body is telling them. And they said, this kingdom, the kingdom of power, the kingdom of glory, the kingdom of solution to every problem entering the kingdom today. Who is the person there? You will enter today. I said you will enter today. And now at the end of the chapter, in verse 28, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? Yeah. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Here is he. Where is the one that heals the sea? Here is he. Where is the one that has the power to break every yoke? Here is he. How can we connect with him? 
kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force can I come can I take? Can I receive? Can I partake? Can I possess? Come unto me. All ye that labor and a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. I want to talk to you tonight. In this message that is bringing miracles to your life, somebody is getting miracles there. This message that is going to bring anointing that breaks every yoke in your life somebody today will get this miracle power will come to the life of somebody there today what are we talking about rest for the restless rest for the restless come unto me all ye that labor and a heavy lady and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly and you shall find rest for your soul tonight you shall find rest unto your soul I said tonight tonight you will find rest for your soul in Jesus' name. For my yoke is easy. And my body is light. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. First of all, a great question. Are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? Should we say now today our problems are solved? Or do we wait for another day? Can we link up with heaven today? Are you the connection? Are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? Are you the supernatural? Are you the healer? Are you the deliverer? Are you the one God spoke about? And he said he will send somebody the seed of the woman that to remove the cause from our lives. Are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? God said he will send someone. And that someone will give us the whole truth. All the revelation of heaven. There will be no error. There will be no false doctrine. Only the truth. Are you the one that have come? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Are we waiting for another? There's no other savior. There's no other healer. There's no other deliverer. And there's no other possessor and deliverer of the truth. Isaiah said, he'll be a mighty savior. Isaiah said, he'll be wonderful. Isaiah said, he'll be a mighty God. Isaiah said he will open the eyes of the blind. He will make the lame to walk. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Jeremiah said that one that is coming is the Lord our righteousness. He brings righteousness. He takes our sin away. He takes our righteousness away. The Lord our righteousness. Are you the one. Or do we look for another? Daniel said, somebody is coming. He will put an end to sin. So he will bring in everlasting righteousness. Daniel said, it will be like a stone that comes without hand. And it is thrown at a mountain. All the mountain will go to pieces. Are you the one? The one that will take the mountains of our lives away. That when that stone comes on that mountain, all your mountains will be shattered. All your mountains will flee away. Mountains are going today. I said mountains are vanishing today. God is bringing joy and laughter in your life. And John said, are you the one? 
Mountain river, are you the one? Are you the one to take her mountains away? Are you the one to destroy the works of the devil? Are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? And he said, I am the one. He gives you the word that brings faith in your heart. That if you have this faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, tonight I come to talk to your mountain. Be removed and be cast into the sea. You know, tonight it will happen. Somebody there said it will happen. The one that Daniel spoke about. That, that is the one that shatters and scatters all mountains from my life. And tell the one to come, or do we look for another? The psalmist said it will set us free. It will be the Lord our shepherd. His hands will be pierced. His feet will be pierced. And then he will redeem us from all iniquity. And John said, the psalmist spoke about this. He said, we should be expecting somebody. He's the redeemer. He's the restorer. He's the one that takes all our sins away. And when he comes into our life, he redeems us from all iniquity. Ask thou the one to come, or do we look for another? And Jesus, I don't look for another. Because I am the one. He has come to you where you are today. You're not looking for any other solution. Solution has come. We're not looking for any other salvation. Salvation has come. We're not looking for another way to heaven. The way has now come. Are thou the one to come? Or do we look for another? And then the prophet said, He will be a king. He will reign from shore to shore, from one border to the other. The king is coming. The king is coming. And then the prophet said, that Zacharias, the king will ride into Jerusalem. And then the people will blow their coats down. And he will say, behold your God. And John said, that king to come. The word that will rule and reign. And the word that has been from all eternity. And is going to come into our lives. And he will destroy Satan from our lives. It will dethrone all the paths of darkness away from our lives. Are you the one to come? Or should we look for another? He said, I am the one. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is riding at your life today. Riding at your family today. And every other one that tries to control your life. Every demon, every devil, every evil spirit, every power of Satan, nothing will come down from the throne. And Jesus will reign in your life tonight. You see the one to come. Yes, he's the one. The father, the father confirmed that. The father said, this is my beloved son. In whom I want please. His words, his miracle confirmed that. He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to walk. He made his dosa insane. He made them to be normal. He drove out evil powers from their lives. The father confirmed this. And then his word confirmed this. His death and resurrection confirmed that. There's no other name given among men. Under heaven. By which you can be saved. The only name. The only power. 
the only provider of salvation is Jesus Christ. And now he has come. He died for you. And maybe you are still asking the question. I am here tonight. Have I come to the final place? Here you are. Miracle is very near. Forgiveness is very near. Salvation is very near. The king has brought the kingdom. And now, those who say, I don't care what happens today, this Jesus will be my king. I don't care what opposition may come, this Jesus will be my Lord, this Jesus will be my Savior. The kingdom of God has arrived, the kingdom of righteousness has arrived, the kingdom of forgiveness has arrived. And the kingdom of love has arrived. The kingdom of power has arrived. And from that John the Baptist time, when he asked that question, until now, this kingdom of God, sovereign violence, sin will try to stop you. Because I'm going to invite you tonight. I say, come to Jesus. I say, come to the Savior. I say, Come to the king. I say, come to your healer. I say, come to your redeemer. Sin will try to stop you. The kingdom of God sovereign violence. You brush all that sin aside. Sin will not stop you tonight. Am I talking about somebody there tonight? Sin will not stop you tonight. Religion will try to stop you. Uh, you have your religion. And what are you going to do with Jesus? Religion cannot give you heaven. Religion cannot give you forgiveness. Religion cannot give you power to overcome. And so, as you are coming to Christ, religion will try to double cross you. Where are you going? Don't you have your religion? No, that's, it, that's when it says the kingdom of God sovereign violence. And the violence will say religion, get out of my way. I'm going to have righteousness today. Jesus will heal your body. And then that juju you have, that idol you have, will try to hinder you from coming to the king that heals. The kingdom of healing. And then, it's then you throw that idol away. You throw the talisman away. And you say, today, today, the kingdom of God sovereign violence. And the kingdom of God is open to you tonight. Somebody is coming in. I said somebody is coming in. Will you come in? I want to hear you. Will you come in? Rain will stop you. Religion will stop you. Yes, my dear Lord. They say you come and do some rituals somewhere. Rituals will stop you. That's why the Lord is saying, Come unto me. That's the one we're expecting. That's our Savior. That's our Lord. That's our Restorer. That's our Redeemer. Come unto me. All ye that labor and a heavy lady. But before I go to that, look at that Matthew chapter 11 verse 3 he said unto him that thou he that shall come or do we look for another and Jesus answered and said unto them go and show John again these things those things which he is do hear and see the blind receive their sight the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are restored and the poor have the gospel preached unto them and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me he was saying 
I am the one. He is the one. I said he is the one. He is the savior. He is the one that shall come. That God spoke about. He is the one that shall come. That the prophet spoke about. And now that he has come. And he has gone to Calvary. And he died for you. And he shared his blood for you. Now he says come. Unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy lady. Number one, the condition of the restless. The condition of the restless. Number two, the compassion of the restorer. He's our restorer. He's the one that shall come. He's the one that opens the door of the kingdom. And he says, don't let anything hinder you. Enter the kingdom today. The compassion of the restorer. Number three, our continuation in restfulness. Our continuation in restfulness. That means we come to him. We enter the kingdom. Somebody will enter today. I said somebody there will enter today. And then we enter and then we continue rest for the rest of your life restoration for the rest of your life renewal for the rest of your life revival for the rest of your life rejuvenation for the rest of your life our continuation in restfulness number one the condition of the restless did you hear what you said all ye that labor. All ye that labor. He's talking about the people who labor in vain. They labor and there's no result. They work and there are no wages. He's talking about those who are laboring in darkness. They don't have any light to see what they're, look, what they're looking for. And because they labor in darkness, and there is no light. They cannot have all the privileges they're looking for. He said, I am the light of the world. You are laboring in darkness. All that labor. He said, Come unto me. And these are the people that labor in self righteousness. They see, they're going to get to heaven. And they labor and labor and labor. And they do not know how to get to the kingdom of God because they labor in self righteousness they seek I'm doing the best I can the best you can the best you can do cannot get to heaven heaven is very far you can jump the highest you can. You cannot get there by that. You can stretch your hand and stretch your hand. You cannot get to heaven like that. You can take the ladder of religion and climb and climb. Religion as a ladder cannot take you to heaven. They, labor, they want to get to heaven by themselves. That's why it says, all ye that that labor. All ye that labor. He said, you cannot get anything that way. But you will come to me. Hey, look at this one. Let me read this to you. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. The labor of the foolish will yes every one of them. Because he knows not how to go to the city. The labor of religion. The labor in self-righteousness. The labor I'm trying to give money to the beggars. That doesn't change your heart. That doesn't bring forgiveness. That doesn't pay for for your debts. That doesn't click you up with the almighty God. God is holy. God is holy. Are you unrighteous? I give you money to the beggars who will not cleanse your heart. That's why it says, those who labor 
God. Because they cannot get to the city by themselves. The people that labor in the flesh, they do the work of the flesh, fornication, adultery, and all the pornography. And then they think that they'll get to the kingdom of God. He says, number one, the people that labor, they labor in greed, covetousness, they labor. I want to get this, how to get this, satisfaction does not come. How to get more money, how to get more property, satisfaction does not come. The condition of the restless, and they're still restless, they labor in infidelity. I say, I don't believe any God. If you don't believe in God, your conscience will be alright. It is saying you believe in God that brings guilty conscience. And yet they cannot trust. There are people that labor in idolatry. They sacrifice goats. They sacrifice animals. They sacrifice money. They sacrifice their lives. They sacrifice their children. To idols. And yet the peace doesn't come. That's the condition of the restless. And you say those who labor. You labor in self-right you labor in idolatry. You labor in adultery. You labor in greed. You also labor also in servitude. They sell their souls to the devil. They say there's too much trouble. The devil is Satan is causing me too much trouble. If I sell myself to Satan, that's okay, Satan, come and come and rule my life. I sell myself to you as a slave. Not rest will come. The labor in slavery. The people who are laboring for the mirage of life. They think they see the greener field ahead. And then they, they are running and running and running. When they get there, there's no water. They look up again. Ah, they said the water is in the ground. Beyond. They run here, they run here, they run there. They get there again. There's no water. There's no light. There's no peace. There's no rest. There's no calmness. They labor for the mirage of life. Number one, the people that labor. To the people that are heavy laden. Jesus said, there's a second category. He says, number one, the people that labor. Look at what you've done for so many years. Look at the labor of your life for so many years. And yet, you have not got the peace. You have not got the pardon. And you have not got assurance in your soul. All ye that labor. Number two, all ye that are heavy laden. There are people that are heavy laden with guilt. They've done something bad. They've done something evil. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. And that sin is weighing them down. The guilty conscience is weighing them down. They are heavy laden. Heavy laden with anxiety. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen next week? What will happen next month? Anxiety weighs them down. If I do this, do I know I will succeed? I did that in the past. There's no success. I went there in the past. There's no success. Anxiety. Other people is the load of oppression. They're living in this place. Landlord and tenants and everybody will be oppressing them. 
They were living in their own village. The villagers oppressed them. They ran away and came to the city. City people oppressed them. They went to another community. Oppression. They are heavy laden with oppression. Some of them contemplate suicide. But they remember if I kill myself, I'm a murderer. And then I will go to hell. You go from frying pan to fire. Eternal fire. Eternal, fire. Eternal suffering. But the burden is still there. It's a heavy load of oppression. Other people, it's a heavy load. The heavy laden with the fear of death. It's like death is following after them everywhere. They're afraid. The dream of dying. The sick of dying. They are kind of anxious about dying. It's a heavy load that the devil has given them. So they will not have a free life. And they will not trust. And Jesus said, number one category. The people that labor. Number second, number two category. The people that are heavy lady. Number three, the people that are both laboring and heavy lady at the same time. Can, can you think of somebody trying to labor? Look at a simple scene of farming. He's trying to weed the, uh, the, the grass. He's trying to plant. And that's a, a heavy load at his back at the same time. Number one, he's doing a fertile work, a work that will fail. He's laboring in vain. And he has a heavy load at the back. The people that have a combination of that kind of problem. Those are the people that they labor in vain and they're languishing in poverty. Those are people they are wasted and they are worried. Those are people they are pouring water into a sieve. And they, as they're doing, they're laboring and laboring and laboring. And all the water they are pouring is not being retained. They're the first to wake up. They're the last to sleep. And they do that every day. And you cannot see it on their life. They are restless. They are oppressed. They are suffering. And they are sick. And Jesus is saying, I am the one to come. I am not the one to come. Or do we look for another? He said, I am. I have come. The king of the kingdom. The king with power. The king with the open door. The one that has come to give you rest. And he says, come unto me. All ye that labor. And a heavy lady. And I will give you rest. Number one, the condition of the restless. Number two, the compassion of the restorer. He has come. The restorer. He has come. The redeemer. He has come. The savior. He has come. He's a healer. He has come. It's the one that will ease your labor. It's the one that will take your body away. All those are heavy lady. The load of guilt on your heart. The load of guilt on your conscience, the load of guilt that bends your back, the annual, yearly, perennial accidents in your life. As you are getting out of one problem, you come to another. And you say, what am I going to do now? Jesus will restore peace to your life. And he will cancel all those things away from your life. That's why he is severe. But he said something. Number one, I call. 
Number two, the confession. Number three, the confirmation. Number one is a call. He said, come unto me. He said, on the way. While you are coming, it will appear there's a lion in the way. He says, don't worry. I'll chain that lion. Because here is the door of the kingdom. Between the kingdom and yourself. It appears there's a lion in the way. That's when you said, well, even if I'm going to die, going to Jesus, I will die at the feet of Jesus. That's why you remember the kingdom of God has arrived. And from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And this door that is open, I am the door. If any man comes in, he will find pasture. He will find pardon. He will find salvation. He will find rest. He will find restoration. And it's a lion in the way. Say the lion of the tribe of Judah will crush that lion on the way. They will silence your enemy for you. They will silence the pass of darkness. And say, and the what Jesus was talking about. Whatever other religious people will say, I don't care. Whatever any false prophet will say, I don't care. Whatever that same partner will say, I don't care. I am going to Jesus. Come unto me. Come unto darkness. And come to the light. Come out of your sin. Come to the Savior. It says, Come out of deception. And come to your deliverer. It says, Come out of your captivity. And come to your liberator. It says, Come out of your sickness. And come to the healer. Come out of your restlessness. Come to the rock of ages. They will bear your weight. And it will support you. And it will sustain you. Number one, the call. And as he calls you today, and he says, come unto me, somebody there, you are coming. I said, you are coming. Salvation is coming your way. Deliverance is coming your way. And rest, restoration is coming your way. The confession, the confession, as you come, you're not just to fold your hands and close your mouth and just be looking at Jesus. You are telling him, he, I am the one that has been laboring. I am the one that is heavy lady. I heard your call. And Lord, I have come. And you say, I drop all my load at the feet of Jesus. All my anxiety, all my care, I drop at the feet of Jesus. All my running about to do rituals, I drop at the feet of Jesus. All my laboring in faith, all my religion, go to Jerusalem, go to Jordan, and go to another place. They say it's a place of religion. I've got there. There's no peace. You confess to the Lord. I am the one that is laboring. The foolish that will yet himself. Because he knows not the way to the heavenly city. And as you make that confession, you repent of all your sins. As you make that confession, you forsake all your sins. As you make that confession, you lock the door behind you. You throw the key away. I come out. I lock the door. There's no turning back. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I lock the door behind me. I've decided to find rest in the Savior. No turning back. No turning back. You lock the door behind you. I've decided to drop all rituals all idolatry 
Oh, I don't say for the girlfriend. I don't say for the girlfriend. I lock the door against them. No turning back. No turning back. Number one is the call. And the sicker is calling you tonight. The healer is calling you tonight. The redeemer is calling you tonight. Number two, the confession. And you make it firm. And you make it clear. I come to Jesus. I never turn back. Number three, the confirmation. You hold on to Jesus. You will be my savior. You died for me. You shed your blood for me. I don't care what Satan says. Satan says I'm too bad a sinner to be saved. I'm on to Jesus. I confirm that Christ has said whosoever comes to me I will in no wise cast out. I confirm that I come. I confirm I'm not going to continue in sin. I confirm I'm going to be for the Savior for the rest of my life. I confirm I'm going to be a child of God. I confirm total bye-bye to Satan. Bye-bye to sin. And I give myself completely to him. I confirm that I accept him as my personal Savior. He is he is mine. He is mine. I confirm. I believe his promise. I confirm. I accept his provision. I accept his substitution. He died for me. I confirm. I will not die. I confirm that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That you so ever. I confirm I'm that to so ever who so ever whosoever believers in him will not perish. I confirm I believe in Jesus tonight. I accept Jesus tonight. I give myself to Jesus tonight. I confirm by faith I will not perish. I have everlasting life. I confirm that Jesus is all I need. It's my savior. It's my restorer. It's my is my deliverer, is my all in all, is my king. He's my director. I confirm. Jesus is all I need. That's what you need to do. And today your life will change. Somebody there said tonight your life will change. Number one, the condition of the restless. Number two, the compassion of the restorer. That's the compassion that called us. That's the compassion that accepts us. That's the compassion that forgives us. That's the compassion that says, I set you free. Number three, our continuation in restfulness. Our, our continuation in restfulness. Come on to me. All ye that labor and a heavy lady and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek I am meek and lowly learn and they in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul for my yoke is easy from today everything you found difficult to be easy from today, progress that was difficult. The yoke is easy. From today, life that was difficult will become easy for you. You come to Jesus and it comes to your heart. Everything you have lost, you will restore to your life. No regrets in your life anymore. No sorrow in your life anymore. Because you come to Christ and you continue with Christ. You know what you said? Our continuation in restfulness. Number one, he said, come unto me. Number one, he said, come. Come for salvation. 
Come for healing. Come for peace of mind. He says, come now. He says, come at once. He says, come without delay. He says, don't allow your brain to think anything. Will he accept me? Will he not accept me? He said, come confidently. He said, come with the courage in your heart. Come with the assurance that has your coming. He never rejects anyone. Come unto me. That's number one. Number two, take my yoke upon you. What does that mean? Take my yoke upon you. Number one is the yoke of companionship. It says, the yoke is mine. I bear that yoke. I also put the yoke on you so that we will walk together throughout the rest of your life. The one that is succeeding and has never failed, he wants to yoke with you and lead you to success. The one that is a mighty conqueror, he never lost any battle. He wants to yoke himself with you. He said, this is my yoke. I carry in part of it. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. Take the other side. And then let's have a yoke of companionship. Said, I have come to Jesus. Come unto me. Number two, take my yoke upon you. The yoke of companionship. So that we can conquer together. From tonight, you'll continue to conquer. It's the yoke of conformity. The yoke of conformity. As we yoke together, you go where I go. You are conformed unto me. You stay where I stay. Because you are yoked unto me. You walk as fast as I walk or as slow as I walk because we are yoked together it's a yoke of companionship and it's a yoke of conformity that your life you are no more conformed to the world you are no more conformed to the nightclub you are not conformed to Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior the yoke of conformity is a yoke of control. The yoke of control. You see, once you are yoked to Jesus Christ, that controls on which road you walk. Because only the road that can take two of you, that's the road you walk. Once you have Jesus Christ, you can only go to a place that you will go. The place you can't go, you can't go because you are yoked together. Because if you try to go and the yoke is still there the yoke will be hurting your neck and that's what the Lord is saying I want to bless your life I want to be with you every time I will never leave you I will never forsake you when you are yoked to the healer your healing is definite every day you are, you are yoked to a, a captain and then it's a conqueror you'll be conquering every day Number one, come unto me. Number two, he says, take my yoke upon you. Number three, learn of me. Learn of me. He said, I don't want you to just say, I decide today, and then you never continue with me. Continue. Learn of me. Learn and follow learn and follow you read the word of God look at what Christ is saying I learned that I listen to that I love that I believe that I accept that learn and follow learn and fellowship it is what you learn about Jesus that brings you to love Jesus more that brings you to appreciate him more that brings you to interact with him more learn of me learn and follow learn and fellowship learn and find all you need 
Learn and find all you need. His promises are numerous. His promises are very different, diverse from one to the other. Learn and find all you need for life, all you need for earth, all you need for eternity. Come unto me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. And then you follow Christ until the end of your life. And then when he comes, he will take you to heaven. Are you there? I said he'll take you to heaven. And then that following will continue. You follow him to heaven. That fellowship will continue. You will fellowship with him until heaven. That finding will be eternal. You enter heaven. You are going to find joy unspeakable. The beginning is that you take action because it says come unto me all ye that labor and a heavy lady forgiveness is waiting for you are you there I said are you there I can't hear the voice of Oshudi anymore forgiveness is coming your way salvation is coming your way pardon is coming your way restoration is coming your way you can put a stop to that vain labor tonight. You can put a stop to all that anxiety tonight. You can put a stop to all that fear tonight. Because Jesus Christ will come to you. And Jesus Christ will solve your problem. He will forgive you. He will change your life. He will grant you salvation. But he says, come unto me. Somebody there, you are coming. I said somebody there, you are coming. You come call. to the Lord today. He will forgive all your sins. Salvation. This is your day of salvation. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Restlessness will come to an end. Anxiety will come to an end. Evil will come to an end. He will forgive your sin tonight. If you are coming to Christ tonight, you want him to save you. You want him to forgive your sin. You want him to change your life. You want him to write your name in heaven. You want him to bring you and take you to heaven when you die. And you want him to forgive and forget and cleanse and blot out every bad thing you have ever said or done. Congratulations tonight. God bless you. You raise up your hand wherever you are. What are you? You raise raising up your hand. Lord Jesus, I'm here. On the side, Lord Jesus, I'm here. On that other side, Lord Jesus, I'm here. I want you to be my savior tonight. I have had your call. You are calling me. And I am coming. Raise up your hand. That's okay. Can you stand up if you're raising up your hand? Can you raise, uh, you raise up your hand? You stand up. Wonderful. God will bless you. God will change your life. God will forgive you. He will give you salvation. Where are you there? Stand up there. And say, Lord, I am here. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. You know, when you said come, he expected that you'll make some movement. And even though the ground is wet, that's it. The kingdom of God sovereign violence. And the violent take it by force. This forgiveness will be mine. This salvation will be mine. This pardon will be mine. This redemption is mine. Whatever the ground may look like. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. If you're raising up your hand, are you standing up? Because you are responding to the call of Jesus. Take that step. Come to him now. Leave that place where you are. What's your umbrella? And with anything you have there, step out and come. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome.
Welcome into the kingdom. Welcome to that salvation. Welcome to that forgiveness. Walk gently, walk gently. God understands. God understands. Just walk gently. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. He's calling you. Forgiveness. Restlessness will vanish away. Anxiety will vanish away. All the passions will vanish away. All the oppression will vanish away. Come unto me. He says, come. He's waiting for you. He came all the way from heaven. He came to forgive you. He came to change your life. He came to turn your life around. He said, I'm sorry you've been suffering for so long. I'm sorry that you have been wasting away all for so long. I'm sorry there's restlessness you have for so long. I could have given you that rest anytime. But tonight, I will still give you. If you will come. Tonight, he will give you the rest as you come. Come unto him. All ye that labor and a heavy lady, and he will give you rest. Oh, yours if one is me as you come, but in what close your eyes, your jure, and tell the Lord, cause of one who are the call. Number two, the confession. Number three, the confirmation. Just close your, close your eyes and tell the Lord, Lord, I confess. I've been laboring, laboring in the flesh, laboring in sin, laboring in fear, laboring in religion. I didn't have victory. I didn't. I need a peace of mind. But now I come. Now I come. Now I come. I believe that you are my savior. I believe you are my redeemer. I believe that you have invited me. And today I come. Forgive me. I accept that forgiveness. Tell the Lord. I accept that forgiveness. I accept that salvation. You said I will find rest for my soul. Thank you, Lord. I believe. I accept. It is mine. In Jesus' name, we pray. Raise up those hands and let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all our brothers and sisters who have just come. They're coming out of restlessness, coming out of anxiety, coming out of their vain labor, coming out of worthless religion, coming out of their sin, coming out of their darkness, and they come to Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Restorer. I pray, Lord, according to your promise. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Blot out all their transgressions. Wash their hearts clean, O Lord. And today, Lord, let the peace of God come to their hearts. Let your rest come into their hearts. Let assurance of salvation come to their lives right now. Let your spirit be a witness in their hearts now they are children of God. Because you told them to come and they have come and you will not reject anyone. Thank you Lord for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said Amen. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom. That salvation is yours already. And you keep walking with the Lord. Come. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Until you get to heaven with him. Our counselors are there right now. I want to share the joy of salvation with you. The joy of the new thing that has happened. That's why they're there. They have some papers in their hands. And you feel the paper correctly and honestly. 
And then when you finish that, for yourself and those who are still waiting, don't go back home yet who have not finished. The vehicle prayer will come after a few minutes now. Praise you are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church, but number 4656 Bravo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 and we have our Bible study on every Monday. From 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, I, the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.